couple more questions, and if there's no more questions about the scope of the social and fire, we'll, we'll, we'll take a couple more questions. Well, I have a, I have a question. Uh, my name is H. Doug Matsuoka. I'm um, part of a contingent of uh, regular users. We have a food not bombs there every Sunday since uh, 2011. Now we use the we use the um, sidewalk part of the park. They actually change the boundary there in order to arrest people inside on the under the park rules. And anyway, um, my question is, we like that spot. It's really great. Um, we didn't ask for the any changes to be made uh, to the park. Um, I know the dog dog users didn't ask for that. And uh, this past Sunday big group of families on the uh, Victoria side using it as they frequently do. I don't think they asked for changes in the park. Now the public is paying for this. Who asked for the changes here? Who does it benefit? I'm thinking, you know, this is some public use to benefit tourists or people that have not yet moved here perhaps, that are moving into Kaka'ako area, making it more real estate more attractive to them. I mean, who asked for these changes? Well, I don't think the city needs to wait for somebody to ask for changes in, in every case to make changes. And I think this is one where this park, as Chris had pointed out, has really kind of gone um, somewhat neglected on a large scale since 1967. And this is really an opportunity to truly honor the events that have happened at this place, as well as to kind of create a place that uh, returns its stature to a gathering place for the people of Honolulu. It's not intended for visitors, it's intended to celebrate our own history in our city center. Well, it, it has to been to a gathering place. La Ho'i Ho'i every, every July since 1987, the powwow people use right. it. They didn't ask for any Not changes. as much as that we would like to see people use it. I, I think okay. for myself, I could say that our goal is to have cultural and ethnic events and festivals like that monthly. Which, really which brings up... your goal to place to have our cultural events in Honolulu. Which brings up my second question. You said that all permitted uh, activities will continue and some of the community uses. You know, my point of view for, the, for the, my group of people is that we're a First Amendment citizens group and we don't need permits to use the park. Um, I'm very suspicious that uh, this, this change is going to be used to um, prohibit my bunch of guys. You said some of the community uses, so some of the community uses are going to be excluded. Who are, who's on the, Actually, who's on the blacklist? I prefer just to the permitted events. And, uh, we well, you, said, three, you said all of the permitted uh, uses and uh, some of the community no, uses. And I think what we, can, what we can clarify is that although it's an administrative decision to determine the department that has management and control of the, of the parcel of the square um, in order to adopt rules to operate within that we have to go through our normal rule making process that's right and so there's there will be community dialogue on on rules for Thomas Square but there's no community the oversight of, over the decision you guys make the you guys make the decision you can make whatever decision whatever rule that you want that's the well, problem that can, is the can make, you can charge us to go inside. You can ban coolers and I, chairs, like you said. You were going to rent chairs and art supplies. You can ban us from bringing chairs in, just like Waikiki Shell and everything else. You can control the concession. We won't be able to bring in our soda. We won't be able to bring in a bottle of water. Or and the food we will sell it. And especially the, uh, not food, not bombs. Especially. That's the because problem. we make and our own food out of our own pockets. The rulemaking process is the appropriate time to have this discussion again, and I'm, I'm certain we will. We but with regard to charging discussion. any kinds of fees, as I said in the hey. last meeting, I uh, will say it again, that all of, the, uh, all of my department's fees are set by ordinance, which means they're a law, which means I can't charge a fee that the council doesn't approve. So there's no guarantee to the public that once Enterprise Services takes over in February that we still will be able to bring in chairs and, and sodas and whatever. There is no guarantee. That's right. There's no guarantee. Once you guys take over in February, you, can do you have you. every single opportunity and defined by your name, Enterprise Services are in the money making business. So. Free access? Not to mention it's suspect, it's, it's suspect because at a time when um, a 
lot, you know, the city is saying, we're so strapped for money, we can't do this for the homeless, we can't do that for the homeless, you can spend a million dollars on this, you know? Yeah. Which, I agree, has been neglected. This park has been sorely neglected for so long by so many administrations. But, because of that, the timing is suspect because because every, you know, the rail project has bled everything out of everything else. And, and <clears throat> then they say, oh, we, we don't have enough money to like do this uh, public program for the, for the homeless. So, you know, the money is just, it just seems suspect of the timing. Especially since they only have this year. People have water uh, problems? Yeah. Yes. Sure. How many? Um, water, are you talking about the fountain that's in the park or water? Drinking fountains. I think it's a necessity. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, there is by the bathroom. There is by the bathroom. So. At least two, and maybe, yeah, at least two, I'd say, for the size, and that's much more important than anything else in there. You guys should use the damn park before, well, like, last, changing it around. I think that's over. But, but, you know, these are important things. Well, these I, are important I, questions. I'm not asking any questions. Everyone else is asking.